Hi, welcome to another edition of the Brawny Lad on Brown Ale, otherwise known as Bronktron, otherwise known as whatever you want. We're going to do an audio shootout between the Ear Studio Mark II and the iFi Go Blue. What you're going to hear is two bars of the original wave file, followed by two bars of an MP3 playing through the Ear Studio Mark II, followed by two bars playing through the iFi Go Blue. The red plectrum is going to point to the source. Uh, let's get into it and hear what they sound like. See how easy if things can break. If it's crooked, make it straight. Do you love me? I can't tell. Pick up pieces and make me well. you think? Yeah, I don't think I'm talking out of school to say that I bet you can't hear the difference between them. Um, first things first, this is the 2000 release, Look Into the Eyeball by David Byrne. We were listening to the track, Broken Things. I downloaded that file. It's 44.1 uh, kilohertz, 24-bit depth. Uh, then I ripped it into a mp3 file at a 320 bit rate depth yes i know that's it's a pretty big mp3 file but i put that mp3 file into my phone my phone then i played it back bluetoothed it to the is it radzone ear studio mark ii played it back through the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack into an apogee ensemble interface with the high z inputs and then Paired my phone to the iFi Go Blue, did the same thing. I recorded all three into Logic Pro and then uh, time aligned them and then split them so that we're only listening to one at a time. So my thoughts, is there a difference in audio quality? Uh, the only thing I can really tell is the iFi has got a slightly bigger amplifier in it. Um, I don't know if that comes across on the MP3, but I had to gain the Ear Studio up about 2 dB going through that 2 mega ohm load. How does that translate into headphones? The iFi is louder. However, if you're wearing earbuds or headphones, with these things turned full blast, uh, you can't listen to that for any length of time. Your ears will get fatigued really, really quick. So they're both plenty powerful enough to drive headphones or earbuds. Um, during the test, the volume was turned all the way up on both of them, and I didn't hear any distortion coming out of them, really. Um, if you can hear that, uh, you must have superhuman hearing, hearing or better hearing than me. However, I have listened to both of them on these Audio-Technica, what are they, ATH-M50 headphones. These are obviously closed back, but they're very common studio headphones. I love them. I've got five or six different pairs of headphones. This is my favorite model and brand. You can tell they're pretty worn out. Using these, can I hear the difference between these two? There is a subtle difference. Um, the cool thing about the uh, ES100 Mark II is there's a pretty cool EQ adjustment section in the app. So you can tailor this 
uh, the output to your headphones. But if you're listening to them both flat, uh, I don't think there's much difference in them. So why would you pick one or the other? I think it's totally the interface you have with the device. I ride motorcycles and I listen to music. And so I like this one much better. I like the iFi Go Blue much better because with gloves on, I can pause and play and rock the volume up and down real easy without looking at the device. I only have to know where that one button is. With the Ear Studio Mark II, they've got these cheap little momentary push buttons. And when you got gloves on, you don't have the tactile sensation of feeling what button you're on or what you're actually doing. So that's why I picked the Go Blue. Um, but here's a caveat. I would not recommend this device only because I bought it in July of 2020. I uh, had it for two years. I bet I rode 6,000 miles on a motorcycle using this to drive my earbuds. And the Bluetooth chip finally started overheating and stopped dropping connections with my phone. Well, that ain't good. I tried to update the firmware and I'm using Mac, you know, um, and I couldn't get the, the website to cooperate. It wants you to install some sort of software on your Mac so that you can update the firmware. But I really do think the problem is in the Bluetooth chip. So I, you know, I looked what was left on the market. Let's see what we got from looking at Amazon. Uh, it appears the two market leaders are the Fio BTR5 and the Radson ES100 Mark II. Both of them use the same Bluetooth chipset, the Qualcomm CSR8675. Since I had a failure, I didn't want to get another device with that same chipset, and that's when I found the iFi Go Blue. It uses the Qualcomm QCC5100 chipset. Hopefully it lasts longer. You can look at the specs here, but I wouldn't put too much faith in them. The manufacturers and vendors will play games with the types of measurements they take and the units of measure that they use uh, just to make one device look better than the other. But they're different units of measure um, and different specifications that they're testing them against. So what's important to me is the interface. Uh, how do you control the device? I do like the iFi Go Blue the best because it's simple and I can use it with gloves. The Red Zone has a pretty cool app that comes with it, but... Uh, Riding a bike, I'm not going to be able to play with the app. Battery life. Uh, all battery lives are stated at nine hours or longer. I doubt you'd ever listen to headphones that long. On the bike, I have had the ear zone on for, I don't know, 12 hours or so, and it lasted the whole time, and then took a full charge overnight. Around the house, uh, I'd have to charge it maybe once every five days because, you know, I'd listen to it cutting grass or or just doing random things around the house. Um, so, yeah, I picked the iFi Go Blue only because it's different, and hopefully it doesn't fail. I uh, hope you got something out of this video. It's kind of long-winded. If you have any comments or suggestions, feel free to leave, leave it in the, in the comment section. That's all. Thanks for watching.